I'm Mark Unger, producer of Roundtable. Because we find this presentation so special, we really would like for you to see this. Please watch. Good evening, and welcome to a uh, single shot at Manhattan's Neighborhood Network Roundtable. Tonight we will be talking about uh, a little bit different form of art, art of thinking. Every artist uh, in their career essentially trying to achieve two things. One, uh, to be successful artistically, basically to create something that artist him or herself would enjoy and believe is good art, and uh, to uh, be successful in terms of career basically create art that will be liked, enjoyed, and essentially bought by others. And uh, it's a pretty tough task, I can tell you that. We have uh, many people who tried and very few who succeeded. And uh, people blaming it on a uh, crazy market going on there. So, uh, some blame it on luck, some just saying, um, well, I guess I wasn't meant to be. But uh, tonight we have a person who seems to see the order in this madness and uh, be able to actually uh, help with understanding how to approach themselves as a person and their art in the right way to essentially be more successful as an artist and to uh, just have better life. Olga Zbarski, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Uh, distinguished uh, Scientist, I would say, right? That would be the correct way to describe you. Thank uh, you for having me. <laughs> thank you very much for being with us. And uh, uh, incidentally, also a very success successful artist who create uh, some very special work, not photographically, but still in the direction of visual art. So we probably will uh, get to talk a little bit about it later. So Absolutely. let's start from alpha and omega of creativity, probably the driving force that created this universe and uh, keeps it going. I said create it for a reason, because that is creativity. And as I understand, uh, all your studies and all of uh, this beautiful collection of creative thinking we see on the table is actually about creativity, essentially. Absolutely. Correct? Yes, uh, once again, uh, hello, everyone. And thank you for inviting me for this wonderful program. I will be delightful to answer all your questions. Uh, and yes, creativity, I would say, is just like you said, uh, is the base for everything. And in our rapidly changing contemporary world, I would say it's also a mechanism for survival. Because every day we wake up, and every day we find something new, new technology, uh, new transportation, uh, new computers, new cars. So our mind is supposed to be mentally and emotionally fit in order to adjust to uh, this rapidly changing environment. And creativity with uh, its originality, fluency, elaboration, uh, flexibility, postpone judgment, and so on and so on can help. Uh, you seem to actually uh, have a much broader definition of what creativity itself, because normally when somebody says, go oh, creative, they're thinking about just drawing something that nobody <laughs> drew before. I mean, that's our modern vocabulary. So how do you define creativity and what it means uh, to you and uh, to all those techniques you actually uh, creating? I see creativity as a practice for unrestricted imagination and original thoughts. I see creativity as creating something new and original, as being able to adjust your mind and the way you think and uh, to um, new thoughts, to new uh, conversations, to new people, to new places. Um, and uh, when you feel uh, mentally and emotionally fit when you are able to elaborate new ideas based on bits and pieces and some aha moments, uh, it means you will uh, definitely succeed because according uh, to enormous amount of studies, creativity predicts success more than IQ. 
Well, I <laughs> definitely been witness of uh, both of those being essential and uh, incidentally sometimes non-essential for the success, but I definitely agree with you that without creativity, especially in creative field, when you're creating something that should in the end of the day be appreciated by people or just one person who would finally want to have it in their house, it's definitely what uh, defines it. So how, since we're talking about photography, let's uh, take photographer and photogra uh, artist photographer as mm -hmm. an example, how creativity would work in order to help a uh, photographer, let's start with uh, creating better, more engaging art, uh, mm -hmm. the one that will be more appreciated by the artist himself and uh, his spectators? Well, uh, one of the important component of creative uh, thinking is perception, the art of perceiving and the art of seeing. So if you are not able to uh, see certain things in a different way, you would never be able to uh, make great choices, come up with uh, original ideas, uh, make great decisions. Uh, same uh, in photography, I think um, uh, if we uh, talk historically speaking, um, in the past, photography has started uh, more than uh, science, I would say, than uh, a visual art. And even people that uh, were, um, you know, uh, well-known fathers of uh, photography, I would say they refer to themselves more as scientists and uh, engineer, engineers and uh, so on. But um, nowadays in our contemporary society, uh, we perceive photography as a uh, visual art, or I would say uh, art of storytelling, because um, if you have your uh, unique uh, uh, perspective and uh, you see uh, a very uh, simple uh, object or a thing in a way that no one else sees, and you can give someone this gift of seeing uh, this uh, traditional uh, thing uh, see it from a different angle, I think um, it's a great deal. Uh, you boost someone's uh, imagination. You help someone to come up with uh, new uh, ideas, to create new connections, because um, uh, usually uh, creativity and originality is based on uh, how flexible you are in making connections among uh, and between uh, distant uh, things. Um, uh, things that um, um, uh, for a regular uh, viewer are not connected. So if you are a true artist, if you are a true photographer, you can look from this uh, unique and different angle and show the world uh, the beauty of a simple thing and let everyone to enjoy it in a different form. So mm -hmm. I think that's oh. what uh, defines a uh, creative uh, photographer. Well, it's already a life-changing uh, perspective, and uh, I am fascinated how you put it some pretty complex things uh, in a simple and concise form. So basically, uh, let me uh, see if I understood what you were saying correctly. You're talking about uh, connecting two things that are not visibly connecting in order to create something new, and uh, that's essentially the core of creativity and aesthetics in a way. Uh, I would definitely agree with that, even though I didn't think about it this <laughs> way before, but uh, uh, the logical question would be, uh, is it possible to train this quality? Because that seems to be much more scientific, much more measurable uh, quality and approach. So I would imagine that you have ways of uh, training them. Oh, absolutely. If we're talking about photography, and I'm not a professional photographer, but dealing with creativity and dif de dealing with uh, different characteristics of creativity and methods, how to boost uh, mm -hmm. those characteristics and make them your own, uh, we always uh, tell people, uh, try to find someone uh, who fascinates you, let's say a greatest uh, photographer, and try to read as much as possible about this person and try to borrow this person's identity. 
reality. Try to see the world the way this person, uh, um, you know, sees or uh, uh, used to see the world. Try to think the way this person used to think. Also, I would encourage every uh, photographer um, to take risks, um, not to get scared of experimenting because, uh, you know, maybe it's not going to work. And I know that um, uh, some uh, great photographers used to say the first uh, uh, 100 or even 1,000 shots uh, will not work for you. But after that, you will start to, uh, you know, grasp what you need to grasp, and you will get used to it, and you will start seeing things that uh, no one um, sees. So this way, you can really take a simple uh, shot um, uh, beyond, um, you know, just uh, regular vision and uh, regular um, perception. So also, I would say add some concept to it, add some emotions to it, uh, bring some meaning to it. So. Um um, photography uh, obviously uh, deals with uh, light, so you need to bring, you know, this uh, lights and learn how um, uh, or understand how lights simply either uh, uh, bring out or destroy certain lines and shapes and forms and colors and dimensions. So once you, um, you know, feel that you're comfortable with this uh, conceptual effect, so you will be able. Hello, today's single trick is about using red filter for black and white video work on digital camera. Uh, you can use it for digital photography as well and it would be helpful, but uh, it can do something with video that cannot be replicated by uh, any editing or it will take a lot of effort to do that. As uh, you know, the whole world is, uh, can be divided in three basic colors, green, red and blue. And if you would look at your red channel in Photoshop, it's always the brightest one. So if you uh, start a video and apply a red filter to it, your high contrast image with a lot of black and a lot of deep white will be more even and give you twice as many half tones and basically more editing opportunities, more uh, of the actual shadows you can play with. Thank you and watch us on YouTube. We're back from break and uh, lighting indeed is essential of photography and uh, your uh, thought about experimenting was actually one that I find one of the most important ones. Photography on one hand was all created by experiment but on the other hand it's uh, at the moment uh, believe it or not one of the most rigid medias with the most strict rules and strict understanding what photography should be and uh, that's uh, in a way resistance of the old school to a uh, plethora of new opportunities that came into life with new technology. And uh, right now, uh, there is room for experimenting bigger than it ever been before. But uh, let me ask you this. Uh, your visual art is, as I understand, uh, some uh, very interesting mixture of art in terms of aesthetics and science. It's not just, uh, its purpose is not just to create something beautiful to look at or even to generate some mood, which is most of the art pieces create, but to achieve a certain purpose, basically to uh, make a certain uh, mindset to be implemented 
the viewer's mind. So can you tell me a little bit more about it? We actually, uh, if you don't mind, I see some yes, of those Yes, absolutely, here. absolutely. It calls Mind Booster Art, and uh, it's a mixture of uh, colors, shapes, patterns, textures, dynamics, um, different characteristics that uh, can uh, maximize and uh, optimize your uh, creative potential, can uh, make you calm down if you experience uh, some kind of anxiety, uh, or can uh, help you to concentrate and focus if you're in your office and during the day uh, you need some energy. So obviously, uh, colors and certain shapes and again, overlapping and uh, all this dynamic will uh, uh, set your mind uh, for a certain mood. Uh, also, another part of uh, my artwork is uh, making uh, oversized uh, artwork uh, from semi-precious stone. So again, uh, I use natural characteristics of uh, amazing uh, semi-precious stones, and I also uh, use uh, my knowledge on how, again, uh, color, shape, texture, uh, dynamic, uh, certain um, uh, waving lines and uh, overlapping lines and uh, uh, other characteristics uh, maximize or uh, boost um, your emotional response. Oh, that's actually pretty great. And uh, the, uh, since we started talking about this, uh, I think we can explore a little bit uh, the other direction in which uh, the right mindset is very important, especially for visual artists. Not just uh, achieving what they're trying to achieve uh, artistically in terms of aesthetics, in terms of creating the art, but also creating uh, a piece that would be successful commercially in the end of the day. And as I understand uh, what uh, you're helping people to do, <laughs> not just in artistic field, but virtually in every field, including running our uh, very uh, strangled United Nations, <laughs> <laughs> is uh, exactly that, helping them to achieve their day-to-day -day goals, to basically formulate them and create a path of achieving it. So <laughs> can you tell me more how the magic Thank happens? You. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I do a lot of presentations. I present at national and international conferences as well. I communicate with uh, my reader uh, through my books and textbooks and uh, uh, articles and blogs. And I always encourage people, it doesn't matter they are visual artists or healthcare providers or teachers uh, or engineers, uh, everyone, uh, just um, uh, Try to change um, the pattern of thinking. Uh, try to think differently. Uh, you know how you always have heard, try to think uh, out of the box. Exactly. So uh, I'll tell you, there is no box. You create your own box based on your own limitations or based on your own perception of your own limitations. And yeah. that's why people, uh, when they grow up, they stop believing. And um, you know, there is a say that uh, children are more creative. It's only for one reason, because children don't have biases. And uh, they um, are able to, um, uh, you know, get amused by or be amused or stay amused by simple things. And that's what keep them going. And that's why they are so original. Um, and uh, they uh, don't have this box just yet. They didn't build it. And unfortunately, uh, when they, you know, when we um, get older, we start creating our own box. We think that uh, we cannot do certain things or we are not good at public speeches, or we cannot paint, or we cannot draw, or we cannot do photography, or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So first of all, we need to remember that self-esteem and self-confidence, as well as self-determination, are very important components of success. Also, new perspective. So when you're able to take a new perspective on uh, every day life, on every little thing in your life, so then you will come up with new ideas. Uh, also, self 
self-awareness <laughs> is very important for anyone. And in order to uh, develop a richer and better imagination, I always recommend everyone to surround yourself with um, not successful, but creative, interesting people, people that inspire you. Also, traveling is a great uh, deal and a great technique because you get exposed to different places, different people, different languages, and obviously your mind has to adjust. And uh, once your mind get into this more flexible mode of adjustment, that's when you are ready to create uh, great ideas and so on. Oh, it's definitely the most interesting does crossing the river to Jersey can count as Absolutely. traveling. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but let me ask you about this. I mean, <clears throat> maybe the reason why I'm asking it is part of the problem you was just describing, but I do believe that those boxes, they do exist for a reason. People uh, create them as a result of the experience. Sometimes mm -hmm. it could be false experience. I Absolutely. definitely admit it, but Absolutely. often this experience is uh, completely true somebody tried to touch the fire and got burned. Mm -hmm. So here's one wall of the box. If you're touching fire, you're gonna, it can hurt and you can uh, get a blister. Uh, somebody uh, tried to, I don't know, uh, walk for 100 miles and fell down on 30, well, they would know that either they will have to rigorously exercise or they just can't. So most of the walls of this box, I do believe, are not uh, just mm -hmm. random and imaginary. Maybe they possible to overcome. And uh, if it's a focus of a person, often it happens. But now we get into the point of talking about ratio of effort versus uh, the product. Mm -hmm. How much effort that particular box would take to break and will it actually make my life better? Mm -hmm. I uh, uh, agree with everything you say, but there are certain uh, great techniques to help it as well. Uh, there are uh, good say, um, you know, like um, when life uh, gives you lemons, make uh, lemonade. There are uh, some people say, uh, you know, um, you rather see uh, um, your uh, like a glass uh, half full than half empty. Mm -hmm. I would say try to turn your defeats into your victories. Try not to be scared of any mistake that you make along the way. Try to perceive everything you do as one more step towards your victory. And try to perceive it as your learning experience. And sometimes things don't work the way you want it to work, right? But rather see it as you tried it, it didn't work, and be happy that you know how not to do it next time. Be happy how <laughs> not to do it the next time. After this break, we will try to uh, get back to this. Thank you. Hi, Alex AG again from Single Shot with uh, another one, another single trick. Today I want to tell you about uh, using internal flash of the camera. Um, even some very professional cameras have that, but uh, if you would ask a professional uh, photographer, including myself, you would be told not to use it, especially on close-ups and especially when you're photographing people. Reason being, uh, when you do it, the face being overblown. You're getting practically a white face instead of uh, having nice skin tones and nice lighting. Is there anything you can do about it? Actually, yes, there is. You can just put in front of your flash a simple dollar bill and take a picture. What, will, uh, what it will give you? Uh, dollar bill is made of material thick enough to control enough light, and on top of it, it will give you some nice yellow tone to complement the skin tones of the person. This is a uh, single trick by single shot. Watch us on YouTube.
All right, we're back. All right, we're back, and uh, we have only a few minutes left, so I just wanted to conclude uh, this conversation with uh, something uh, very concrete. Basically, uh, we were talking about turning defeats into victories and the perception uh, being actually uh, the only difference between the actual loss and virtual loss. But uh, if you would try to uh, put it together in some concise form, basically a program for somebody who already tried and failed, and uh, failed again and yet again, and still wants to try, but probably don't have enough patience to do that. How uh, a person can deal with that? Because that's exactly what happens with a lot of artists. Uh, becoming a successful artist is a long and very uh, rocky, Role to take, and uh, many people just starting to feel that they just can't continue anymore. And uh, even if they have all this valid advi advi advisory, they just can't. So, what a person should do in this case? Well, in this case, sometimes it's good to step back and uh, reevaluate everything that you have been doing thus far, and reevaluate uh, re those reasons why you think that uh, you did not achieve what you plan or wanted to plan to achieve. So sometimes it's good to switch between, um, you know, um, uh, the way you perceive things. Sometimes it's even good to start doing a new project or even switch um, your field and uh, try something else. So once again, when I'm talking about training your mind to uh, see positive things, as simple as that, when uh, someone keeps uh, telling you that you are a stubborn person, you can simply say that I'm not stubborn, I'm persistent. And this way you can turn and train your mind, you can turn every negative thought into something inspiring. Maybe Maybe not completely positive, but at least inspiring. Mm -hmm. Something that will give you new wave of energy, and you would you will be able to try something new. Well, that's definitely interesting thought. Uh, can you just give me an example of something that would not be turned into uh, positive, but will be still turned into something exp inspiring? And just to make sure that uh, me and uh, our viewers understood you correctly. Oh, like for example, sometimes uh, people are recommended to change what they do on a regular basis in order to achieve more. If you are able to bring knowledge from one sphere to another, you are able to see new things that no one sees. So if you are a visual artist, maybe it's a great deal to uh, start doing something else. For example, music, even though you never tried, you never played, but but your mind will be boosted and rewired to something new, to a new experience, and it will give you this new creative energy, and you will be able to see something you did not see before. Well, I guess our viewers will have to try to look uh, for more information on your <laughs> website. It's a lot. Thank you very much. It's a uh, really inspiring conversation. So creativity and flexibility. We should and remember brainstorm. that. And brainstorm. And <laughs> brainstorm. That's the, actually the book. Uh, <laughs> I hope you found that worth watching as much as I did. I'm Mark Unger for Roundtable. Thanks for watching.